Hello, I'm Cheryl. In this problem, we're asked to find the minimum distance between the point 1, negative 3, 2 and my plane, which is described by x minus y plus c equals 3. Now, as you can see, if I'm looking for the distance between this point and my plane, there are lots of different ways I can do that. I can come across here, I can come to here, I can come to here, a wide variety of different points that I can go to, all leading from the point 1, negative 3, 2. I want to find which of these distances is the smallest. Okay, so what I want to do then is minimize distance. So I need to come up with a formula for distance. So let's begin with saying that the distance equals the square root of x minus x sub 0 quantity squared plus y minus y sub 0 quantity squared plus z minus z sub 0 quantity squared. Now in this particular case, I know one of the points, the point 1, negative 3, 2. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. And I have the square root of x minus 1 quantity squared plus y minus a negative 3, so that'll be y plus 3 quantity squared and z minus 2 quantity squared. Now, I would like to write this as a function of just two variables. So I'm going to use the fact that I have my plane x minus y plus z equals 3. Solve that for z. So z is going to equal 3 minus x plus y. And I'll substitute that into my formula. So I now have the square root of x minus 1 quantity squared plus y plus 3 quantity squared plus z, which is 3 minus x plus y minus 2 quantity squared. And one more simplification step. I'll have the quantity x minus 1 squared plus the quantity y plus 3 squared plus, this is going to be a 1 minus x plus y quantity squared. All right, so this is what I want to minimize. Now to find the minimum, I need to find the critical numbers. The, I need to find the critical points. It's going to be fairly difficult to find critical points for this expression. So I'm going to do one more thing that's kind of interesting. I'm going to note that if I minimize the square of the distance, I'll get the same values as if I minimize just the distance. So I'm going to go ahead and take my distance, I'll call it capital D, because what I'll do is I'll take that distance and square it for my capital D. That turns my equation into the quantity x minus 1 squared plus the quantity y plus 3 squared plus the quantity 1 minus x plus y quantity squared. And then I'll minimize this function. Okay, so I need to find critical points, which mean I need to find the partials with respect to x and y. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll find the partial of d with respect to x. So if I take the partial with respect to x, I'm going to treat y like it's a constant. So my derivative will be 2 times the quantity x minus 1 to the first power times 1 plus 0 plus 2 times the quantity 1 minus x plus y to the first power times a negative 1, which is going to give me 2x minus 2 minus 2 plus 2x minus 2y, and that simplifies. When I combine like terms, I've got a 4x, a minus 2y, and a minus 4. So I combine my x terms together, my y terms, and my constants. Okay, now I have to find the partial with respect to y. So my partial with respect to y of xy, I'll take the derivative with respect to y, so I'm treating x as a constant. So this first piece is just a 0. 
and then I'll have plus 2 times the quantity, y plus 3 to the first power times 1, plus 2 times the quantity, 1 minus x plus y to the first power times 1, which is going to give me 2y plus 6 and a 2, a minus 2x, and a plus 2y. And again, combining like terms, I'll have a minus 2x, 4y, plus 8. Okay, so I want to know when these two partials are both equal to 0 or if either one of them is undefined. Now, if you look at the partials, neither one will be undefined. So the only thing I'm interested in here is when are they both equal to 0. So let's go ahead and find out. I want to know when is 4x minus 2y so 4x minus 2y minus 4 equal to 0, and a minus 2x plus 4y plus 8 also has to equal 0. Well, I can think of this as simultaneous equations. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that lower equation and multiply both sides by 2. That gives me the system 4x minus 2y minus 4 equals 0 and a minus 4x plus 8y plus 16 equals 0. And now when I add these together, I notice that the x terms add together to be 0. And I have 6y plus 12 equals 0, which means that y is going to equal negative 2 if I subtract 12 from both sides and divide both sides by 6. So y is minus 2. And if y equals minus 2, I can calculate what x is by substituting into either one of the equations above. So let's do 4x minus 2 times negative 2 minus 4 equals 0. So 4x plus 4 minus 4 equals 0. 4x equals 0. So x is 0. So my critical point is the point 0 minus 2. All right, now just because I have a critical point doesn't mean that I have an extrema. So I'm going to have to use the second partial test. So if I use the second partial test, remember what that tells me. It tells me that if I have the second partial with respect to x evaluated at my critical number, so at 0 minus 2, and I'm going to multiply that by the second partial at y at my critical point, 0 minus 2. Then I'm going to subtract the mixed partial at 0, negative 2, and square that. And I want to determine whether that's positive, negative, or 0. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at that second partial. Well, we've got to come back and look at where my first partial with respect to x was. So here's my first partial with respect to x. If I take the second partial with respect to x, notice that it's going to be 4. And it doesn't matter what value I plug in for the x and y. The second partial is always 4. So I'm going to replace that with a 4. Now I need the second partial with respect to y. So here's my first partial with respect to y. And notice if I take the partial again with respect to y, I'm going to get 4. And it doesn't matter what point I plug in that value will always be 4. Now I'm going to subtract the mixed partial. All right, so the mixed partial, I'm going to go up to my partial with respect to x and differentiate with respect to y. So I'll treat x like it's a constant. So that's going to give me a minus 2. And again, it doesn't matter where I plug that in. Um, if I get a minus 2 
I'm going to get a minus 2 no matter what happens. So that will be minus 2 quantity squared, which is going to give me 16 minus 4, which equals 12. Now, because this expression is greater than 0, and 12 is obviously greater than 0, I know that I have a relative extrema here. So I just need to determine whether it's a minimum or a maximum. And to do that, I'm going to look at the second partial with respect to x at that point 0, negative 2. Now, I've already calculated this once before. I know that that answer is 4. And the important thing is noting whether this thing is positive or negative. Because it's positive, that means I'm going to have a relative minimum at the point 0, minus 2. OK, now in this problem, I'm not really looking for relative extrema. I'm looking for absolute extrema. So technically, I have to check the endpoints. However, if you look at your picture, you can see that if I look at the distance between this given point and any point that's on the edge of that plane, it's going to be going a further distance than if I go into the plane. So this relative minimum that I found is indeed the absolute minimum as well. All right, so there's one last thing that I need to talk about, and that is answering the actual question. I know that I will go, I have to find the point 0, negative 2. I can get the z coordinate by plugging it into my formula, and that will give me the point that I'm going to. But that's not what the question asked. It wants to know that distance. So let's go back and find that distance. Well, the first thing is I'm going to get this, the value of z. So I know that z is going to be 3 minus x plus y. So z is going to be 3 minus 0 plus a negative 2. So that's 3 minus 2 or 1. So the point that's closest to my original point is the point 0, minus 2, 1. But to find that distance, I'm going to go back to my distance formula, not the square of the distance, but the regular distance formula. And I'm going to take the distance between 0, negative 2, 1, and my original point, which was, if you remember, 1, negative 3, 2. So I'll take the change in x, 0 minus 1, square it, the change in y, so that'll be a minus 2 minus a negative 3 squared, and then 1 minus 2 quantity squared. So I get 1 squared, which is 1. This is going to be negative 2 plus 3, so that'll be a 1 squared, or 1, and that will be negative 1 squared, which is also 1. So the minimum distance between the point 1, negative 3, 2, and any point on the plane is root 3. I hope that was helpful. Thanks.